Right, apologies for that. I bring quite a lot with me, which I'm going to show you uh, later on. So, um, so sorry that Rish couldn't be here uh, today, but uh, I'm actually really pleased that I, could, uh, that I could join you. And I wanted to share a few thoughts on uh, AR, AI, how both of them together are already changing our everyday lives, and more importantly, what we have to look forward to in the months and years ahead. A little bit about us, about Blipper. We are a technology company specializing in, uh, in AR and computer vision, and we are building the first AR visual browser. Uh, we, uh, of course, are all used to uh, web browsers. It's the way we navigate the web, but the reality is that the world as such is much bigger than the World Wide Web. And what we're trying to do is index, is catalog the entire world to allow you to give you far more from the world you see as you point your camera, as you point a lens at anything from an object to a person to a dog to a flower to whatever it might be. I'm going to have to assume that the majority of you know what AR is. It's kind of, you know, it's the buzzword. Uh, we heard from uh, Mark Zuckerberg just a few days ago that AR is about to become mainstream, and, uh, and everybody's talking about it, from Facebook to Apple to so many others. Uh, but just a quick show of hands, how many of you feel confident that you'd be able to define what AR is? Okay, great. So, I mean, the simplest, I think the simplest way to describe it is that it's a way to be able to overlay the real world with digital content. So the reality is right in front of you, and augmented, you are overlaying digital content. But computer vision is absolutely key. I mean, AI is such a huge, huge field. Uh, computer vision is the field within, uh, within AI that essentially understands sight. And what I want to talk about today is not AI in general, but actually computer vision within, uh, within AI. So computer vision allows, uh, allows machines, allows computers to be able to understand sight. And the photograph that you have uh, right behind me is a great example. You have people, you have animals, you have an environment, something that to us is very normal, and us as human beings are able to recognize it. But what we're trying to do through computer vision is allow machines to be able to understand that world just as we understand it. And that is the key of computer vision. We are, as human beings, used to using our sight to be able to understand what is in front of us. We process that, and then we navigate the world in front of us through that processing. Computer vision is exactly that, allowing computers to be able to understand what's in front of them and then be able to take actions by, by understanding that, uh, that reality. It's a really exciting time, I think we'd all agree, for, for computing power right now. And you know, this slide, what I'm trying to illustrate is the fact that over time, over the last 25 years or so, the sophistication, the progress of computing has kind of been in line with the different human behaviors that it has mimicked. And as technology progress has continued, what we see is mimicking way more complex human behavior. So, you know, in the first instance, you see kind of talking, typing. We then move to touching and sensing. Then we move to listening and watching. And now, where we are right now through cloud computing, we are kind of immersed in the reality in front of us with the ability for computers to understand that reality and just as importantly, to be able to overlay it with digital content. But it's really just quite fascinating to think that what we really are doing through that increased computing power is mimicking, mimicking a whole set, a whole host of human behaviors. So of course, now we find ourselves in a, in a position where we have the ability to use the power of augmented reality, to use the power of computer vision to change our everyday life. And the capacity for social good that AI offers is absolutely limitless. And I think the challenge that we have now is to be able to find ways in the short term, in the medium term, in the long term, to be able to apply that and be able to align that progress to, to social good. So here's one example, driverless cars. We all know that they're coming. We all know that they're here. Some of you will have experienced it firsthand. 
it's a fascinating space to, to watch because, of course, when you think about a driverless car, the first thing that comes to mind is there's nobody in that car, it's driving itself, isn't that fantastic? But actually, the clever part of this is the computer vision element, the ability to train a camera to be extremely intelligent. And that's what's happening here. And you think about that moment where you might be driving in a particular street, and three streets away, you are potentially in a danger zone. People carrying weapons, for example. Now, if you don't have really advanced computer vision technology, a car will just see people in front of it holding a whole bunch of things and not really take any action as a result. The key is to be able to train the camera lens in that car to be able to give it really, really advanced cognition and make sure that when that car faces something that in this case means danger, you don't get there in the first place, you find an alternative route, you get out there really fast. So the computer vision element from a car perspective, from the driverless car, really is about giving that absolutely outstanding cognition to the camera lens that is powering the car in motion. In healthcare, the opportunities are absolutely limitless. We're talking about being able to match patterns, uh, look at um, a broken fracture, a fracture or a broken bone, and be able to match those patterns with literally millions and millions and millions of similar uh, instances, and then be able to help doctors uh, with, uh, with their prediction, with, their, with what they need to do as far as the patient's concerned. Now, really important to understand here, is not about replacing the doctors, it's about giving the doctors the ability to be able to take action and be able to have way more information than they've had in the past. And then another example, think about the fact that population is increasing, we have more and more people, people are living for far longer, we don't have enough nurses in the world, for example. We don't have enough people to take care of the aged population at, at aged care centers. Well, robotic-led nurses, again, through AI, is another example of the sorts of things that will really be able to help us in this particular field of healthcare. Education. I have two young kids. I am absolutely amazed at the impact that bringing a book to life through augmented reality has. We as a company work with literally thousands of schools, thousands of teachers, thousands of students, and the analysis that we have is that bringing a book to life, bringing content to life through augmented reality increases the retention rate for the students by a minimum of 60%. Typical example, you're going through a book, you look at um, the solar system, if you don't really have much interest in astronomy, you pass the page. But if you bring that picture of the solar system to life and all of a sudden in front of you, you have the planets aligned as they should be, it's a completely different educational experience. So the classroom as we know it really is going to change and that is happening right now, but over the next few months and years we will see tremendous progress. Training, manufacturing, think about all those complex manuals that uh, we are used to, from anything to fixing a photocopy machine to uh, a major aircraft needing maintenance, being able to point a lens through either a phone, tablet, or headset and immediately be able to identify what needs to be done without the need of lots and lots of complex manuals uh, presents us with tremendous opportunities. So again, that combination of recognition and then being able to overlay digital content to be able to bring something like that to life. And marketeers, how many of you are marketeers? So uh, less than 10%. Well, marketeers are pioneers when it comes to so much of, of this technology. We've been around for five and a half years, and since the start, we've worked with some of the world's most iconic brands who've wanted to use augmented reality to be able to bring their products to life, to be able to enhance that consumer engagement, to be able to uh, deliver a whole bunch of entertainment or information about a product or whatever it might be. And so digging, um, bridging that digital and physical world 
is happening right now, but again, over the next few years, we'll just continue to grow. You know, gone are the days when you will walk into shopping centers and need to have long conversations with, uh, with, uh, with people to find out more about a product. You'll point at it, you'll get tutorials. This is happening already, obviously. Tutorials, links, uh, reviews, whatever it might be, and, and brands from cars to cosmetic companies are using augmented reality to be able to bring their products to, uh, to life. So what I want to do now is, um, is move to, uh, to a demo and kind of show you some of this uh, in action. Now, a, a couple of caveats. First of all, there are a lot of you in the room, and a number of you are, are using either Wi-Fi or, or your 4G. So this is not me coming up with an excuse before I start. But if I struggle a little bit, it's just that I was um, trying it out earlier, and, and it might take a little while. But what I want to show you, show you is this computer vision in action, this recognition in action, and then some examples of, uh, of augmented reality. And some of you will have heard uh, only yesterday that Google is about to launch uh, Google Lens, which tackles a lot of what I've, uh, what I've spoken about. I mean, we, we're a small player, but we're really excited about Google taking this really seriously now. We're looking forward to seeing what, uh, what, what it does. We've been in this computer vision world now for the last uh, 18 months, and we're busy, as I say, cataloging and indexing the entire world. And I think what you'll see is that you know, small players, big players are coming in force now in this field of computer vision. So let me, um, let me connect my phone. Right. So the first thing I want to do is just do a quick sweep through this room. And what we have done so far, we, we understand the world through around 33,000 words. So the words that you're seeing are the semantics linked to what my phone is picking up. So a nightclub. I mean, you, you all knew you were here in a nightclub, right? So this actually obviously makes quite a lot of sense based on based on, on the light. And you'll see that the words is picking up. Kind of makes, well, it makes total sense, actually, for, for the environment that we have right, uh, right in front of us. So the waving, unfortunately, doesn't, doesn't get picked up. <laughs> so now um, I'll try and see. So you see there, it's picked up a hand. And if I now click on hand, it will give me a whole bunch of content aggregated from the web that is useful. And if I click on this little one here, this is our proprietary knowledge graph, where we are able to then not only find out more information about what I've just looked at, which is a hand, but actually a whole bunch of associated entities that I would want to find out more about. And this is that sort of early days of text-based search 20 years ago, where you go to find out one thing, and two hours later, you're reading about something completely different. You don't even remember why you went in in the first place. And that's what we've done through this proprietary knowledge graph. And as I mentioned earlier, we recognize right now around 5 million entities. And what we're doing is horizontal recognition, so trying to figure out and index the entire world, but then drill down really deeply into particular verticals. So for example, right now in the US, we recognize every single car from the year 2000. And with a minimum 94% accuracy, we can tell the make model in the year straight away. So our capability in auto, in facial recognition, in fashion, which is actually extremely complex fashion uh, recognition, because if you think about it, you point at a person, and it's about trying to figure out, are they wearing a jacket? Are they wearing trousers? Are they wearing a cat suit? Are they, you know, whatever it might be. So being able to separate that through computer vision and then being able to index it. So that's, um, that's an example. Let's do a bit of facial recognition. I have my copy of OK magazine here, which is my uh, reading of choice when I, when I travel and has a lot of celebrities. So um, straight away, it picked up Adele. And then, as I showed you earlier, information about Adele and a knowledge graph on Adele. And for those of you who are fans, you'll see it makes total sense in terms of the either films, songs, people associated within, within her knowledge graph. We now recognize 320,000 public figures. 
Uh, only a few months ago, that figure was around 70,000. So you can see how quickly this will become millions. Uh, and then, of course, giving people the ability to be able to create their own profile. So the, the recognition that we have on on, uh, other than that uh, Francois uh, Tom little mishap, which, I, which, I, which I'll blame on, uh, on the angle, is actually 99.5%. Uh, and it's just uh, it's been a real, real breakthrough for us. And then a couple of other final examples. I have a Coke can in front of me. I'm going to... Good. Thank you. So this is... Um, this is a good example of the AR campaigns that we developed for a whole bunch of brands. So in this case, a Coke can turns into your own personalized Spotify jukebox, and I take my Coke can away, I plug my headphones in, and off I go. And we, we've worked, as I said earlier, with you know, thousands of some of the most iconic brands on the planet who use augmented reality to be able to enhance that, that experience with, uh, with their consumers. So, I think I'll, I'll, I'll end by sort of predicting a little bit how, how these two come together, because I think one of the fascinating things about where we are right now with, uh, with AR is that we are on the verge of it becoming absolutely mainstream. But the reality is that it's been on the verge of becoming mainstream for probably the last three or four years. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that. We believe really strongly is that you can't really uh, scale augmented reality if you don't understand the reality in front of you in the first place. So that's why we made a really conscious choice to work extremely hard on the computer vision side of the house and then be able to merge the AR and computer vision into one because that's where AR immersive experiences through outstanding recognition really comes to life. So the perfect marriage between AR and computer vision is definitely the reason why AR will become mainstream in our lives over, over the next few years. There's a whole bunch of people who will say, well, hang on, from a facial recognition perspective, what about privacy issues? And absolutely, there's a whole bunch of privacy issues that we should talk about and we should help shape with regulators, et cetera. But always try and think, I mean, I think you're all here for a reason because you're very passionate about technology and everything that can be achieved. Imagine being in a foreign city, fainting, having a medical condition, and just be able to have somebody point at you with a phone and find out the information that will save your life. There are so many different instances where that recognition with the ability to then either find out information, trigger an experience, or overlay digital content will change the world as we know it. And it's been an absolute honor to be able to share some of those thoughts with you. Thanks very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>